the president of the Bahamas Union of Teachers speaking out for the first time about the suspension. We've got the details straight ahead. Several employees from the Ministry of Work staging a peaceful demonstration today over hazardous pay. That story straight ahead. And a Bahamas airplane grounded today. Find out why coming up. The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report starts now. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. Good evening, everyone. I'm Candino Knowles, and welcome to the Bahamas Tonight, the National Report. As always, it's good to have you with us. A United Nations report lists the Bahamas as an armed conflict zone and placed the country at number 11 out of 20 of the most homicidal countries in the world. The World Health Organization's 2014 Global Status Report was published in the Business Insider and was based on instances of rape, robbery and homicide in each country. The report also noted that 75% of homicides in the Bahamas in 2012 were caused by firearms. Honduras was listed as number one. Clint Watson spoke with the Prime Minister about this latest development and he tells us how as a major tourist destination this is cause for concern. We are not going to allow this to, to continue. We're not going to allow this to take place in the way they're doing it. But of that, you could be satisfied. Prime Minister the Honorable Perry Christie says notwithstanding the accuracy of the UN's World Health Organization's Global Status Report, placing the Bahamas 11th out of 20 countries worldwide with the most homicides, the Bahamas must avoid being classified in world journals as a crime-ridden country. No matter how strong we become, in terms of economics and the power of our economy, we are not doing what we should be doing if we allow the madness in our streets that call crime to continue unabated. And therefore, the police must resolve and they must know that the government of the Bahamas will not spare any effort to address this issue, including what has never happened before, mobilizing the defense force. The Prime Minister says it's not good enough to just rationalize that these killings are retaliatory among gang violence, but at all costs we must avoid a culture of killing. An International Monetary Fund report has revealed that the Bahamas has lost the greatest tourism market share of any Caribbean nation in the post-recession years, with this nation ranked as the region's most expensive. The IMF revisiting tourism flows to the Caribbean report shows that the country's share of the tourism market declined by 3% between 2007 and 2000. 2013, the biggest drop in the Caribbean. The nation's leader says his focus every day has been to drive the investment portfolio for the country. We have over the next few months major announcements to make about additional investments in the country. Um, you know, you, when you look at the rating agencies like Standard & Poor's, you will see that they are anticipating certain things. And um, the opposition must, must now recognize that the economy is not going to be a subject of debate for the next general election. Clint Watson, ZNS Network News. Well, the suspended president of the Bahamas Union of Teachers is speaking out tonight as she seeks to set the record straight about the claims being made against her by executives of the union. Fern Carey has been following this story and she tells us that the president is not going down without a fight. There was no crime committed. That is president of the Bahamas Union of Teachers, Belinda Wilson, setting the record straight regarding her six-month suspension, which took effect yesterday. That decision made by the executive committee. The committee claims Wilson broke two union rules and also suspended treasurer Lorraine Nose for four months for similar violations. Now, Wilson would not reveal what those violations are. However, she said the suspension comes at a crucial time as she and Nose were leading negotiations on behalf of teachers and those negotiations are 90% complete. I'm now awaiting a counter-proposal from the government, what is expected actually as early as next week. So what is going to be hindered now is not only the terms and conditions of service for our members, but the salaries and the benefits, their money. The union will be holding its annual general meeting next month, and Wilson made this appeal especially to members here in Nassau. 
all of you need to be there. At that meeting, there's going to be an election for three persons who will serve as an appeals committee so they can do their investigation and so that due process can be done in this matter. So I just want to say today to those of you who have been texting and calling and crying, God is with me Definitely. and God is with us. And as I said earlier, no crime was committed. So I want to pause and say to our members, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Yeah, right. And I look forward to serving you yes. 2015 and beyond. Karen Carey, ZNS Network News. Well, groups of protesters began boycotting the Bahamas in Miami today in response to government's new immigration policy that says anyone who does not have the legal right to live and work in the Bahamas must be returned to their home country. The boycott is being led by Florida politician Daphne Campbell. Campbell, who is of Haitian descent, held a press conference a week after the new policy took effect on November 1st, in which she called on all cruise lines to boycott the Bahamas. Well, today, three groups made up of some 30 protesters took their plight to the Port of Miami, the Miami International Airport, as well as the Bahamian Consulate in downtown Miami. Consul General to the, for the Bahamas in Miami, Ricardo Trico, says his office is not concerned about the boycott as the protests are all based on fabrications and untruths. Well, a scare for Bahamas Air passengers this morning as a Dash 8 was grounded after experiencing problems. An investigation is underway at the Flight Standards Inspectorate as well as the aircraft makers are on the ground trying to determine what went wrong. Airline officials say the plane had not taken flight yet and 27 passengers were on board when it encountered problems. Fortunately, no one was harmed and 24 of them were transported via another carrier. This segment of the news is brought to you by Shell Quality Fuels.